Hello, everybody. Welcome to this Cloud Congress online event, which is a discussion between, um, I'm just here to help the discussion between Amrita Dhaliwal, Daisha McGee, and Aitor Basori. And we're going to be talking about um, work in the field of clowning into um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I'm just going to be throwing some questions out there and hearing what you three have to say about the work you've been doing because you've I've been collaborating in various ways. And um, at the Clown Congress, we're, it's our thing this year is identity. Um, and we're also looking at how we organize the Clown Congress in future so it can itself be more diverse, um, equitable and inclusive. So I'd just like to start by um, uh, inviting all three of our guests to introduce yourselves briefly um, and uh, with your name and where you are and what you're interested in, clown, what your clown uh, practice is right now. And also maybe you could say a few words about um, uh, how, when, or what did you realize that the work in clown and clowning um, needed this uh, input on uh, some kind of active input into diversity, equity, and inclusion. So uh, Amrita, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Ritha Dhaliwal. I'm here uh, actually in the same place as Daisha. We're both in Los Angeles, California, US. I'm in the land of the Tongva. And um, your question was, when did we start? Yeah, or what um, kind of made that happen? You know, it's interesting. Uh, I actually, someone asked this question, so I had re re uh, responded. And I looked back through the history of Idiot Workshop. So John, uh, John Gilkey actually started from like... Um, uh, an income, uh, a class equity, um, a, a class level, like he really tried to price the classes so they were really affordable so anybody could take them. And so he had really had, I think because of his circus days and traveling with the circus, he had a particular lens on um, uh, the economics, the cost of things so that it could be available. And he, even when I first started working with him, he was always working out ways for people to take classes like deferred payment or partial or what have you. Um, and I believe it was like, he made that visibly known too. So it wasn't like that you had to ask. So um, I, I just named that because there was within the ecosystem and an adapt uh, something in that, that was like willing to meet people where they are. And then our particular work started with gender, probably in 2017, 2018. Um, and then, then um, in, into um, racial diversity in 2018. And then we had like a program in 2019, and then um, and then in 2020 we went through uh, white racial 2021 we went through white racial consciousness training the idiot workshop as the teachers realizing that there's a lot more work to do around um, you know it's like sometimes you're just like looking out at the world and you're like oh if I want to be a change if I want to make changes I have to like also look at how it's operating with myself so we kind of started doing work internal around the pedagogy, around individuals, around the school, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, and that's a very quick snapshot, but that's where it started. Okay, thanks, Henry. So that's, that's great. Um, hey, uh, Daisha, how about you? Yeah, so my name is Dr. Daisha McGee, and I got into clowning because <laughs> I was doing improv, and they're like, you're a little, like, you do weird stuff. And so then they, um, then they, meaning friends, other improv teachers, recommended that I take some of the idiot workshops. And so that's how I met um, Armitha was through was through taking those courses. Um, and then through that, that's when I did. That's when I met um, um, like Aitor and then the other clown, various other clown teachers that I've taken. And uh, right now, I'm currently working on a show. Um, called Donkey, a culture biography of a public school teacher. And it's something that I started like back like in 2018, 2019 of doing these short little monologues because I'm also a school teacher and getting fed up and angry with how I was being treated, how I was and my other colleagues were being treated within the public schools. And so I created these monologues and then, you know, pandemic happened. I sort of set it aside. And then I took a bouffant with Itor, and that was like a click of realizing, oh, all of this anger and all of this rage has a place within the clowning world. And 
And so that's when my, um, so on no November 8th, everybody, November 8th, the Elysian Theater, Los Angeles, California, um, Donkey, a culture biography of a public school teacher will be happening. And uh, yeah, it's a co it's actually a combination between clown and bouffant and a little bit of storytelling. So um, I'm really excited for it and also very, very scared, um, but I'm doing it. I'm making it happen. Right. Yeah. So, um, and I do appreciate what Armitha said about how how John made it, because a lot of these classes I wouldn't have been able to take if I hadn't had some sort of scholarship. Because I'm a freaking I'm a teacher, and so I already don't have any money. Um, I mean, that's just like what it is. Like, like I don't have any money. Um, and so making it possible, and making it possible, so I don't have to beg for it. That's the part that gets me with some of the clown classes and some of the, and even just the, some of the in institutions where you have to fill out this application and where you're essentially begging, like, let me tell you my life story. Let me tell you how horrible it's been. And in truth, my life has been fantastic. It just, I just happen to be in a profession that underpays, um, underpays teachers. And so it's just is like, um, when I don't have to like beg and fill out the stupid applications, then it makes my life a little easier because there's already stuff that you have to go through as a person of color to do this kind of a, to do this kind of work. So I have no idea if I answered your questions. Oh but... yeah. Okay, good. Oh sure, yeah. Okay. Just remind everyone go see that show in November. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm just right that. Is... <laughs> flash it, like cut cut away. Just show the poster. Yeah, yeah I can. Yeah. I can send you a graphic. Yeah, I can send you the graphic. Sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm also just, uh, apart from noting down bits, I'm just collecting keywords here. And so if I've got money, uh, before and anger, that's why I'm collecting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Aitor, hi. Hi. So I am Aitor Basauri and I am, uh, from Spy Monkey, um, which is like a kind of, uh, uh troupe in England that does, um, funny theater, uh, we like to call it due to the controversy of what the definition of what clown is and is not. And uh, we just said, we just like to make people laugh. I mean, that that fits in the category of the clown. We do clown, and if it doesn't, then we don't. Uh, it's not so important for us. <laughs> um, but it's important for us to talk about it when we have a beer in our hand or a glass of mezcal, because it's a beautiful topic of conversation what clown is and what is not uh, with a drink. And then uh, I I don't know. I mean, the thing is, as I, as when I was thinking about the question that you said, that you asked, John, I was, I don't know if suddenly I, I fantasize in my head of a beautiful story of realization that the world was um, unfair and I was part of the problem. And But it didn't really happen like that. It kind of, I seem to remember that Emily Coleman, our producer, said we are very white in our organization and we have to change this. We say, what do you mean? Uh, I'm from Spain. Say, no, no, but you're white. So um, we have to do the we have to do the, the work. And then we started to do the work. And then with with the work started the realization the realization of the lack of, of uh, actors and actresses and people from the global majority in our world of clowning and, and um, physical comedy and laughter. And we start to ask ourselves, what can we do to change it? And um, we start to, to, to read and took um, uh, seminars and workshops with people who who have done the work previously, and then we start to uh, create bursary places for people, for performers of the global majority or people from the global majority who was interested in participating yeah. in the work. And then we started to find, through that, we started to find brilliant allies like Amritha and Tesha, who have helped us to start a little bit of a change very often very unsuccessful uh but whenever we succeed is 
brilliant. And um, and interestingly enough, personally has opened a huge world of possibilities to make people laugh. And um, it also has helped me personally to see things about myself as a clown performer who I didn't know before. For instance, how when I go to America, where I am now, I am perceived not so white as I am perceived perceived in the Basque country where I am Basque. I have seven Basque surnames. So I'm one of the chosen people. So, you know, all these, how how all that thing, because we are very nationalist in the Basque country. And um, yeah, but when I am out of the Basque country, no one knows where that is even or what Basque people is. So we walk ourselves around the world thinking we are the chosen people. And then when I go to America, they just ask me if I'm going to, if I am bringing some chorizo in my suitcase and say, don't you realize I am Basque? Anyway. Yeah. But it has been, for me, it's, 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 it's been really brilliant. And I can't wait to go back to the, to the rooms uh, with lots of actors from the global majority and lots of women and LGBTQ and create spaces where there is equity and fairness and everything and to do whatever we can to, to make our work full of those, of people who are uh, underrepresented. Because yeah. it's really fun and they have amazing stories to have fun with. Can I ask all of you then, so coming off that, what you were mentioning there, Aito, and you, you did mention <clears throat> how you, know, you started to collaborate with Spy Monkey um, with, with other um, artists from the global majority. Can I ask you all, and I, you know, how your three of you and others started to collaborate? What Can you tell us some more details about how that happened, how it was organized, and, and also how it felt? Um, and Aito, is, am I right in thinking that was your project um would like to meet is that that was the starting point yeah okay. yeah that was an idea that was an idea of again from emily coleman our producer um and and probably toby park and natasha our education officer um, were involved in in it where we uh uh ask the arts council to give us money to organize a paid workshop where we will pay actors from the global majority to 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 play with us to to, to do some of the exercise and some of the work that we normally do to see to see if they like it to see what what did they thought about it and um, and uh, and what 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 did what do they like and and if they like what we did and just to have come to have an encounter a meeting uh i know it sounds very loose but yeah what we... did you ask then what 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 did you like um Amrita, you were involved with that right and what 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 were your responses to that well, uh um Rachel, were you going to finish saying I'm something sorry. i'm so yeah. sorry yeah i just want to i just going to say one more thing sorry no, but and when we when we that was the that was the idea, no. And then I remember once I knew Amrita because she had been in one of the workshops I taught in Los Angeles, and then she ended up organizing the workshop I was teaching in Los Angeles. And I remember vividly one day talking to her and saying, oh, "I need to find an, an actor from the global majority that could help us, um, someone that is funny." Ta -ta -ta. And suddenly I just stopped on the screen. And I said, "Fuck." Rita, you are an actor from the global majority. <laughs> so, I, I just, I don't know. For me, Amrita was funny, so for me, that was all that mattered. And um, and and then Amrita did uh, had done lots of work, and she helped us to organize that and to articulate the the naming and um, the naming of the things that we're going to do there to be 
with full of equity and equality. And um, yeah, I think that's that's what that's what I need to say. Great, thank you. Um, so what? So maybe I may say maybe you could say something about what what was the where did that lead to, and and what were some of the feelings or experiences of um, let's do these exercises. What do we feel about this? What do we like what do we want different? Well, you know, because I had, um, uh, I have to say that I had taken, I'd worked with Spy Monkey before as a student and, um, but I had never, there were some exercises I was really familiar with. There were clown things, but there were also things around rhythm and play and specifically with instruments. Um, and so I, I have so many feelings about that workshop because it was just, it was a phenomenal weekend. It was really, really special. Like it was in those ways that you just felt like the existence of it, the gathering of people in this way, it was, it, it felt like a profound moment. Um, I could have been enchanted by London too. So, but I really loved it. Um, and so what I will say is um, my experience was I got to, I had the great privilege to just, I got to observe, but then also help around some guided conversations around identity. And um, what I'll say, because um, I, I don't live in that land, so I don't know like what the general ecosystem is. I couldn't speak to that. Um, I'll say for me coming in, um, I found it to be really powerful to just have these really strong performers gathered in an affinity space. So everyone in the space, um, is a, a, a person from the Golden Majority outside of um, ITOR and Toby as a teacher and Emily was also there. Um, and, and it was just this like very powerful experience, all these people to be together and playing together, which you don't often have in comedy spaces in the US. So I'm comparing this to here. Um, so I found that to be really powerful and it, it, it did change. I feel like some of the material, how it would resonate, what we would bring forward. Um, and, uh, you had a question about like I, earlier you asked, like, how did that, you had a different, I had, I think a question about, like, um, I think the question I was really interested in is, um, well, too, there's like, uh, uh, for example, oh, we were doing this, you know, I, I, I'm trying to imagine it and um, the, the, this kind of exercise and this particular exercise felt different, as you said, because of that, oh. who was in the room or this exercise felt, ooh, ooh, I'm not sure what, what I, if, you know, so the specifics of it and how. I can this, revisit, yeah, the, the, I feel like the exercises, I tour, um, correct me if I'm wrong, they were still spy monkey exercises um, and yeah, there yeah. wasn't any adjustment. The adjustment was really, um, it, it was how we gathered, mm -hmm. naming specific things and giving people agency, um, giving them permission and reminding them of their agency to speak up if something happens in the space and to um, encourage a shift in the cultural idea that oh, we don't talk about race in this room. We don't talk about money in this room. We don't talk about just uncomfortable things in this room. That goes out there, you know? So to, to kind of break that and to dissolve it so that we start to say, no, 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 that also belongs in here. And for me now, this is me oh. personally getting into maybe my ethos of the clown, that this is this art form that is, of, that is capturing our humanity. And the clown so shows up to show themselves bare and raw, their full humanity, so that we, the audience, can see ourselves in some way. Yeah. And we can hold the humanity of the world in a more profound way. Um, it makes sense then that in a clown space that we would say, like, don't put that out there. Don't make these rules and walls and these containers that, they, oh, we, he, this is what clown is. It's only this. It's apolitical. It's, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. we set up a container in which we allowed for it. And then within that container, there were, um, <laughs> just contradicting the use of the word a container, I just realized. But I'm, we are saying that within this space, like, w you know, hey, we can, we can go there. And then I was there on the outside watching just because we had been doing this in LA for a long time. So um, watching to support so that the teachers could focus on 
really teaching their the, the pedagogy, watching the students on that level. And then I was there just as a backup also to have an additional eye, like watching, seeing if something, because in the beginning, people maybe aren't going to raise their hand and be really vocal. You just see it in a tightness. They might be holding their breath. They start to kind of scale back a little. So then I, I could say, oh, I noticed this thing. And then, you know, I could be like, oh yeah, that exercise also brings that up. So I, I wish I could say there was like this like nice formula, but truly you go in with a plan and then you adjust on your feet and you're constantly adjusting and then you finish and you realize, oh, this, here are all the ways I would do it differently. Here are all the things that I would keep. Oh, and et cetera. Um, and I think Daisha, you and I have both been in the journey with Spy Monkey and them doing, we've taken workshops throughout. So we've, I, I have felt a big, I have felt a change. Oh um, yeah, I've definitely felt like before a, a shift in, I like how you said, um, like it gave permission to bring in those topics because definitely in the past there was, and, and I've been in situations where I'll bring up something that is a little bit, a little like race or women or like bro or whatever and have it be a little like people are like, oh, Ooh, ooh. Yeah. and and then having to like oh I got to repress that I can't let that like that's my first impulse I can't use that first impulse because the audience is not going to um understand it or appreciate it or make them feel uncomfortable but um I know I tour like how you like how you set up the space in the beginning of a class and then even when mistakes do happen we, there is a space for us to have conversations, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation or whether it's a group, but it's either way, it's always acknowledged. And in the past, maybe it was acknowledged, maybe it wasn't, um, but now definitely it's it's more it's more being acknowledged. So it's creating a space where where you know I I feel like you said fully human in order to express all the things that I need to express within this workshop. Mm -hmm. Could you, is there, um, I'm, I'm, um, apologies if I'm sort of pushing too, too much in one direction with my questions and maybe it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not the way to do this discussion, but I'm really interested in like what, for example, Daisha, you mentioned like in the, in the past, you might have said, mm, I'm not going to bring that topic, you know, to do with race into this workshop, into this space, but, but there's the shift where you do. And, and what does that look like? What happens when you do that now? How or what? Is there any examples you could? Um, um, I'm trying. Let me let me think. Well, um, <laughs> well, I guess the example is just you know when you're a clown and you have that impulse to do the thing, and you're like, "Am I going to do the like?" You don't. There isn't that edit. There isn't the editing of like, "Oh, I'm not going to do the thing." You just you just do the thing. And, um, and, and maybe there'll be like, and particularly if, because now it feels like you're particularly, I, um, spy monkey, your classes, I tour your classes definitely feel a lot more diverse, um, than they were in the past. And, and so there is, <laughs> there is, I remember, uh, maybe it was a couple of years ago, a couple of summers ago, another, uh, black clown, um, um, destiny made, she made a joke about the colored purple. And I was like, I was, I was like, why? She just, she just made a joke about the color purple, and I'm like, damn, what? Oh, that was amazing. And in the past, that may or may not have happened. That may have may may or may not have been um, um, present because, she, and I'm, I don't want to speak for Destiny. I'll just speak for myself. But having, like, looking out in the audience and having it be all white people. And like, are they going to even know the color purple? Maybe they'll know the color purple. Maybe they won't. Uh, maybe right now, people who are watching this have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And then that, like, and then that becomes, like, the joke is still funny, but the audience they, doesn't land on them because they have no, they have no cultural reference of of what that is. Um, and so, providing an opportunity for the global majority, of people of color, the BIPOC community. Um, having them to be able to just express themselves and make the jokes 
not the jokes that they want to make, but just the opportunity to make those jokes has been a big, big change. That's one of the biggest changes that I have seen, um, particularly with with um, taking um, Spy Monkeys courses, classes, and particularly in, and, and also in relationship to taking other clown classes where the instructor may or may not have done their work. And by what I mean by their work, their own inner sort of racial, racial identity awakening um, and like saying certain things and having the room just be a hush and not having the um, awareness of, of having, not having the awareness of being able to, 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 to see that hush and then to address that hush. And then in order to be able to navigate, like how do we uh, change the atmosphere? So it's back to being light and playful and fun and jolly. Mm -hmm. That word, Daisha, you're using there, hush, that's, uh, oh, that's, a, that's really fascinating because you're using it there about <clears throat> maybe a, you know, hypothetical clown teacher it doesn't have that awareness, it isn't reading that, what's going on there and there's a hush around that. Mm -hmm. But but also what that what you were talking about before with the color purple example you know the joke and um, you know that perhaps in the past that might not have been said and there's a sort of hush around you know there's this sort of like it, I don't know it just seems like a really important um, thing to talk about hush somehow um, yeah. because as you say you know well even then maybe um, maybe folks watching this now thinking what what is this color purple. <laughs> And um, but then you can address it, right? And then you can say, "Oh, you don't. I could. I, I sense you don't know what I'm talking about here." Well, you know, do you want to ask or you know? And then we get to debate that stuff, and it gets on the stage, as it were, it gets in the class. But I do want to be. I want to make sure that this is clear that as a performer and as a student, it isn't my responsibility to have that discussion with that person who does not understand the thing. It is not my responsibility as a student to have those conversations and that's where i'm like um i get a little bit like that's where the rage comes out and i'm like like i'm not that's not my role i'm here to learn how to be a better clown not how to be a better clown and teach people how to be better people so i just i want to make sure that like that gets that's a little caveat and that's i'm gonna i'll say that's for me because I have a degree in education and I have a degree in multicultural education, which is now diversity and inclusion. And I, I cannot <laughs> deal with racism 101 questions. Like, like I look at you and I'm like, no, I'm not having that conversation with you because I've already had that conversation. I've already talked to people about that. And I'm like, no, no, bro, not going to happen. I guess, I guess that, that, conversation and that stance is you know that that is out there now and we 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 are all aware of that well well i say we yeah if you're not well it's you know yeah do some work so yeah mm -hmm. is there anything else um on on this subject that we've mm -hmm. just been going around you want to add in I, either i thought or i understand i um yeah i mean the my two friends are so brilliant and so eloquent and they know so much that I, as a, as a practitioner of this thing that we call clown or uh, funny theater or whatever, I had a, this, this, uh, 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 this awareness, this waking, waking up this awareness, uh, the awareness about the privileges of being a man and the, um, uh, the, 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 in this patri patri patriarchal society, and this, uh, the awareness of, of in many countries, uh, be identified as a white man, um, that has created a, a kind of a sense of guiltiness and a realization that I have to do about it because I think is I have to do something about it because it's unfair. And um, and when when I am in the room with the students, uh, that awareness I think has made me more sensitive, more vulnerable, has opened up. Um, a, 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 a palette of of things to play with and to have fun with and explore and uh, and also to create a room where I don't teach anything but we all work together to discover where our funny is and the acceptance that we all are 
uh, a different identity, original and beautiful languages have to be able to to create freedom for each one of us in the same equal terms. Uh, which is, I know is an ideal and is, is a little bit an ideal, but I work on, on, that, on those terms if I can. I, my, my rooms, I want them to be like that. And it was very interesting. I, I just finished teaching a workshop in, in New York and um, there is this beautiful clown from uh, Los Angeles called Mickey. I'm going to say his name because he was really brilliantly funny yesterday. And um, it was brilliant because in one of the improvisations, as you, um, Dasha, point out, someone used a term that didn't belong to the person that used the term. And immediately, um, Mickey put his hand up and said, you can't use that word. It's not funny for me because you, you don't have ownership of that room. It doesn't belong to you, of that word. And uh, everybody says, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Uh, sorry. And then we have a laugh. And uh, he was great, Mickey. So an Asian clown is fantastic. Yeah, it's really funny. So, um, were there, you said, you've always spoke a little bit about the, you know, this process and some of the things that happen, and I get a sense of, you know, the effects of working in this way. Were, were there um, things that you wanted, you've wanted to, this is a bit of a strange question, <laughs> that you've wanted to learn but you haven't learned or su surprise bits of learning? Like, oh, I didn't think it was going to be like that. Um, <laughs> where I didn't realize by doing this, this would happen. I saw, yeah. Oh, all of it. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> it's, it's like, what have I been doing all my life? And, and uh, there is a world of possibilities. Everything was surprising. And at first, it felt difficult and painful. And, um, and you know, like, like, fucking hell. I mean, this is horrible. Uh, who am I? And uh, and then suddenly, reading and learning and talking to, to people, uh, you sweep the thing and accept your place. And uh, uh, and now, and now I learn every single day um, new things. And and in a way, you know, the thing is, I think for me, it's very much related to that part of the conversation that we were having before you presented us when you said that thing about values. Yeah, I can't talk about values for society, but I can talk about values for the work that I want to do in the theater. Because it is my work. Do you, do you know what I mean? So the values within my work, I wanna, I want them to be like that. And of course, it, there is this in the back of my mind. We were uh, talking about that the other day um, in, in with, with some actors here. Uh, I would love the world to change and be a more equal and, and better place. But I will do it through the place that I know, which is the theater. Because I don't know much about theater, but <clears throat> Spy Monkey, we, we have been creating work together for 23 years. For better or worse, we, we do what we do the way we do it. And that we try to be better at it. And one way of trying to be better at it has been to change uh, improve the diversity within within our teams and groups of people to try to be a better uh, company. Now, <clears throat> those are the values for our theater. I would love I would love uh, the world to be a spy monkey. Yeah, that's a little bit like world domination. But yeah, why not? Because the spy monkey is quite a nice place. But I don't see myself running anything but a clan workshop. It's <laughs> terrible. Um, th those values, it's, it's interesting thing, those values. Also, uh, it makes the work of the clowns more poignant, uh, more funny, and uh, more beautiful. I don't know if I answered your question, but... I'm, I'm sure you did. You did. 
No, can I add something to what you're saying, um, Itor? And yes. you know, your question, John, like, would you do anything differently? Would you do this? I think there's this, like, one thing I want to say for people listening, if they're like trying to organize a clown workshop or teach or a show is like, like the, um, you will mess up. You will make mistakes, you know, and you will hurt each other in the process. There will be ouches. There's going to be a lot of discomfort. And um, in a way, <clears throat> it's very much like the clown journey, you know, there's just, it, it's, it's a constant learning. And I will say like, I'm constant, I am continuously struck with the hubris of knowing. I think, oh, I know. And then I don't, I get smacked with something I didn't see, I didn't know. And so it just like softens me. Um, and this is a part of like, I know this is the American identity in me of like this, like the finish line winning, you know, and there is no finish line. It's a, it's in this, it almost feel like a more Eastern, like Zen philosophy of like, there's just a constant learning. And you, once you say, oh, I'm on the journey to take this thing that I really care about. And, and I believe the potential of it won't be realized till all voices are brought to it. Then you you hold that and you journey and you are always making adjustments. So I hope in that, in saying that, I hope that I look back at, you know, I look back at what I was doing and I do a little, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. You know, cause in this way, yeah. I'm always growing and learning. And I yeah. also want to be careful that, um, and because also we live in ecosystems that are really interested in right, wrong, the, that binary, that we, as people in the clown community, that we support our other companies, our friends, and we, we see what they're doing, no matter where they are on their journey, and we encourage that they are taking a step. Um, there's a way that the, that the, that the ecosystem of students, et cetera, likes to be like, oh, they're this, they're that, they're not this, they are doing that, oh, but they're doing this. And it really, it let them have that conversation. And we, if we're organizing workshops, we're, we support each other. And we yeah. say, yeah, and we are gonna mess up. And we should call each other and be like, man, I did this thing happened. You know, how are you dealing with it? Um, and so just like reminding that, um, I guess what I want to remind is that it's a constant process. It it's um, we we are in a, a, a an ecosystem of iteration, and that we learn from each other, including students, including people that are outside the ecosystem in the ecosystem. So there is no formula. And if anyone is watching this and they're like, "Well, what was it that you did?" I'm, we are an open book on this side for Idiot Workshop and even what I'm, I've done at USC. Like for me, anything I've done, uh, John, you and I have done stuff. For me, it's an ecosystem of like, it's an open book. You want to know? Here, take it. No. Um, so it's, uh, there's no um, ownership in that um, because it's also built on the wisdom and guidance of so many people before me. It's not mine to own. Um, it doesn't belong to me. So, yeah, I just, I think I said a bunch of things, but. Oh, yeah. Great. Atlanta. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Tasha, do you want to say something about this question about, is there anything surprising come up in all this work for you or, and, and also maybe my next question was going to be, so I'll throw it in there. Was there anything really frustrating that you feel like, oh, I don't know how to do this yet in, mm -hmm. within the work we're talking about? Yeah. Oh, I guess one thing that was su surprising is just like, one, how much fun it is. Like, it's really fun to be in these really diverse groups. Um, it, and like, I think Aitra mentioned it earlier, it just, it does open up a world of possibilities. Like there's just so many things that I was able to play with and do and, and also support others in their own journeys that has been pretty, pretty remarkable and pretty outstanding. And probably one of the reasons why I continue to do the work is, is because of the changes that have been made. Um, I think one of the biggest frustrations for me is, and and I um, Armitha talked a little bit about how, how in the clown community, how we can support each other um, and not be like, well, they're doing this, they're doing that. I just feel like sometimes we have to do be careful um, with that in terms of being being supportive 
but also understanding our boundaries and understanding when to be like, no, that's not cool. Like that was not cool. Um, and this is the reason why um, that was not cool. And, and being open to having those conversations is important. Um, mm -hmm. But I've, I've had to be like, no, I'm not working with that person again. I'm not collaborating with them. I am not like they like what they're doing is I find what they're doing is quite harmful. So I'm not going to be a part of that. And sometimes it does feel a little isolating mm -hmm. um, because I've, I've had to be like, no, I'm not. Nope. I'm not working with with them. Um, but then that's also then been expanding because then I was able to meet like I went to Vegas and I met, met Vegas people. I've been to celebration barn in maine and met them and then and through the celebration barn i met a bunch of new york people um and so it so even though it's like like it has been a little like ex, um i guess maybe self-exclusionary or self-excluding but but because of my own personal health and well-being has also then opened up to meeting other people from around the united states and even around the world um so I guess that was, it's like a little bit of a, like, it was frustrating, but then also like, oh, wait a second. Now I know all these other people. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. I guess big, and then another big frustration is definitely money is for getting funding. And I mean, the reason why I'm doing, doing this show on November 8th, donkey, hey. culture <laughs> of a public school teacher at the Elysian Theater is because they have um, this thing called the spaghetti. I know, I'm totally RuPauling it. RuPaul, he, like, he's, he does it all the time with all of his shows. Um, but one of the reasons why I was able to do this, or how I'm able to do this show is because they're they're offering like a, a opportunity, for, there's like 10 of us to do, to do some shows and they're giving us, you know, stage time. They're giving us like the, like, they're they're supporting us in order to do this show. If it wasn't for for them, and I and I'm very much appreciative of the Elysian Theater, um, I wouldn't it, I would still do the show, but it probably wouldn't be happening. Like I'm still paying for my Hollywood Friends show that I did two years ago. So it's just like, um, it yeah, it, it's it's it becomes a little frustrating seeing my my peers go to Edinburgh and do this and do that. And I'm like, fuck, okay, let's figure out how to do something with what I got. So money is a little bit of, money and resources is a bit of a frustration. Has Daisha, has that got better in recent years? I mean, is that, is that, is that improved? Has your <laughs> access to those spaces improved or is it the same as it was like, I know four years ago? Oh, can you repeat your question? You froze a little bit. Oh, and then I have one yeah. thing I want to add. I just had a little sign there. Your internet is unstable. It shouldn't be. I just changed the internet <laughs> provider. Um, Daisha, just asking if um, the show you're doing now. Um, uh, oh, God. I don't remember what I asked now. Did anyone, oh, no. Did anyone hear me? Um, it was something about if um, um, your, uh, right. So if your access to those spaces has improved, we're talking about um, recent years of working on, um, oh no, it hasn't key. improved. No, it hasn't, hasn't improved. Right. Like I was able, I a friend of mine recommended. She's like, "Oh, I saw Legion's offering this thing," and so I applied and I got in, which is really cool. But I mean, like I know Arm with the like PDA, they have room, but that's I mean that's like an hour drive for me. Like, and I'm like I like and I teach, so I would, like get home and then like go in my car and then perform and then come home and then get up at 5 a.m. It's like, fuck that. I'm not doing that. Um, yeah, so nice. it's just, yeah. yeah. So no, I mean, no access to this. I mean, and then like my friend, she did the black women in comedy festival last weekend here in Los Angeles. And, you know, she had lined up, she got in a theater, she got in a space, she got, and then they like canceled on her for no reason a week before a week before we were supposed to do this festival, they canceled. And so it also becomes a little like, like a little suspect. Um, and she found another space and it was a beautiful space. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that they canceled because the space that she found was quite beautiful um, and really fun to perform in. But shit like that continues, like that continues to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Daisha, can I, uh, but something that Daisha said, I just want to uplift it. Like it is, it is important that like you do also, I, I'm 
I want to say that for the student, like for students, if they're like, this place is bad, this place is good. It is important that you have your own boundaries. Yeah. And I'm by no means saying that that conversation isn't valuable. It really is because it becomes a change agent and informs us like, oh, we get to actually hear what's happening. The mm-hmm. time where I think it gets messy is that if it's just being used as like your own social banter. <laughs> yes. You know yes. What I'm saying? And yeah. also, I do think there is some... there. Don't think that the agents and the ecosystem white supremacy isn't operating within this ecosystem. So how is it that we can like listen to the voices of like black bodied individuals, right? Or people mm-hmm. that we know that the ecosystem isn't holding and to really hold like, okay, what, what is their experience? Um, you know, there is, so I'm, I'm by no means, uh, I just want to say that like what you're naming is really important. And I've definitely, at, cause I'm both a student, I'm a teacher, I, I co-work with different spaces. I have had to um, set my own boundaries mm-hmm. or take a break or step back. And then I return. And, um, so I think that it, it is, it is, um, it's, it's just, I just want to uplift what you're saying. It's really important that, 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 uh, that we don't like gaslight people when they're saying like, this stuff isn't right. Yeah. Cause shit. I mean, we're still part of society and oh, and I apologize yeah. for swearing, but I'm going to fucking swear. Um, but like shit is, is con- I mean, it's real. And yeah. now sometimes, sometimes within the clown community, and I'll speak of Los Angeles, has this like, well, we're clowns and we are so weird and we're already weird. And we're fully accepting. But it's like, no, bitches, no. Like you got, people's got some shit they got to work on. And just because you're the weirdo doesn't mean that you still haven't, the conditioning mm-hmm. of a patriarchal society <laughs> is still not within you if you haven't done the work. Right. Yeah. So- that's a really interesting um, picture that I think a lot of us will just go, oh, right. Even if anyone that hasn't been to LA, we'll just, oh, right. I know what you're saying there, Desha. <laughs> um, to the extent that clown clowning can, or, or many things, but we're talking about clown here, being used as a kind of, you know, way to whitewash um, stuff out of existence. And say, oh, no, but, but this is clown, you know, or this is, or, or comedy as well. You know, how many times have we heard, you know, comedians say, oh, well, it's funny. So what, what's your problem? You know, and um, just to just to come back to that that thing we've been talking about values and boundaries and saying, well, no, actually, no, not this. Um, would you could you say a bit more about that in the clown world? What's the relationship between values and clowning? Because there is this sort of I I, I was brought up on this idea that you know it's just this abstract thing, clowning, and I I know it isn't, well, you know, um, but there's a strong element in clowning in recent history. Um, which says it's just this, you know, it's just this individual thing. It's just up to the individual, and we're all the same. And it's, um, so, what's the relationship between values and uh, clowning or or funny theatre? That's my other keyword there. Thanks for that idea. What's the relationship between funny and values? How do you know? Well, that? well, <laughs> big question. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it yeah. wasn't my question list either. No, it's no. It, 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 it's a brilliant question, but I think, you know, some of the words that we use to do the work that we do have to be in constant, uh, constant question. For instance, there is a word, and this word about individuality. When I went to study philosophy in the university, there is no one. The perception of one always comes in the relationship to the others you very often see a a unique individual much better within the crowd than by itself. How many people is alone, surrounded by people. So, you know, as as uh, in my opinion, as as you were talking with, uh, as Amartya was talking about um, um, uh, uh, things that that flow, Uh, you might be by yourself on the stage, but you play in front of an audience there is a technician. Is I think I always understand what we do as a collective endeavor. Therefore, is full of people of different backgrounds with different situations. Now, what 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 kind of clowns we like? We like clowns who are good people. No, I don't like clowns that are bad people. Uh, I don't laugh 
at bad people. Donald Trump never made me laugh. Adolf Hitler never made me laugh. Chaplin playing Adolf Hitler made me laugh. <laughs> Desha playing that uh, man from the Supreme Court made me laugh a lot. But Desha playing Donkey made me laugh a lot. But um, um, all this, all, so I, I don't think we like bad people. So we try to exercise those things in the rehearsal room and in the theater of respect of understanding, of, of uh, listening, of equality, of fairness. And I personally encourage to push the boundaries a little bit just to see what happens. Uh, but always ready to say, sorry, I went too far. And uh, also ready to listen, please stop, you went too far. And, and, and always ready to stop and talk about what's happening. Um, but you know, I personally, if what I do is what I love the most, because that's what I do, what I love the most. And uh, if I compare it when I invite people to play with me or they come to a room where I'm playing, it's like if I will invite them to my house for dinner. So we are just gonna have a party, hopefully all of us doing what we like the most. And today I am the host. But I can't wait for the day when Desha or Amrita invited me to one of their workshops and I just play with them. I just do whatever they tell me to do or whatever they lead and they invite me to play with. Uh, because I have always taken the, our teaching with the Spy Monkey more than sharing our knowledge, knowing that all our students will end up being better than us because I think that's the purpose of education. And, um, you know, um, I teach now Buffons only at the barn because it's a celebration barn in, in the U.S. And I do it, and Desha always assists me because, because she does it. If not, I will not do it. I don't know if I will do it. It's so dangerous and complicated, and uh, it demands... Uh, we have to be really clever and sensitive and vulnerable and um and um yeah i don't know if i'm saying but the other day i was telling to these students here you know that word vulnerability vulnerability no which um you know you are vulnerable in many situations in the theater because there are lots of power dynamics, no? So I am the director that was bad, that makes you vulnerable. But we don't like that vulnerability. So I was saying to the students that I think the vulnerability that we like, it doesn't come from a, it's not the one that comes from a power dynamic. It's the one that comes from the pleasure of the game. Mm. It's the vulnerability that comes from the pleasure of the game. That's the one we like. So, the performer, the clown, whoever feels so brilliant and vulnerable at the same time, full of emotions, uh, happiness, sadness, uh, uh, nostalgia, uh, grandiosity. I don't know. And that's why, that's why we love that clown, I think. Can I add something yeah. to uh, <clears throat> this please. thing around values and but also I'm going to do yeah. this while I speak so that, there we go. Yeah. Um, one thing I just want to like add is I, I really resonate with so much of what I tour you're saying. And also John, like to, to just say that, like, you know, part of us understanding our values and um, our boundaries too, is the work that you've done around history. It really has helped that you've written these books. You've done all this research on clown history it helps us to look back to see, okay, there was, there were women present, there, there were folks of color, like, uh, or like, look at what's going here. Like the, the, I, the fact that there's someone in the ecosystem doing this deep dive into the history, which is really important. It, it we can't just do DEI training. That's like, here are the words, here are the systems. You have to look at no. the history. It's really, really important that we balance, this is comes from seed model, but we balance um, 
this uh, stories from the shelves with stories of ourselves, you know, that we are looking at the histories of things. So we really understand on a deeper level that this is very old. It's very, you know, that it's been happening for a long time. And so it kind of humbles us to, um, it, I think it helps to guide some of our values. It helps to guide our, uh, our understanding of the boundaries, et cetera. And then how imperative it is that we, that we can be a generation that makes a big change. Um, Cause we can look back yeah. to see, oh, where is history repeating itself? Where did they fall short? Where can we do better? So we move the needle just a little bit. So I just want to say that like, it is very helpful now that there has been this resource that you have um, been integral in providing. So now you can plug your books. Go John. I don't know. <laughs> no, not now. Um, I do want to ask on the on the back of that um, an extra um, question before we get done for time. Um, and, and that, and I wanted to ask this, and this is about the theme of the Congress, which is clowning and identity. And mm -hmm. um, historically, I would say that there's a lot of instances when clowning has been bound up with identity, um, has been based on identity, has been based on stereotypical harmful images of identity, racial or ethnic or gender or um, uh, about um, disabled people and so on, you know, it's so all, it's, you know, I, I've even got to the point sometimes yeah. looking at clowning and uh, feeling that, oh, is clowning just, just racism? <laughs> just, just, um, you know, hurtful, you know, uh, looking at here is history of, of menstruacy and, you know, so is there, is there a particular, what's, what's the clown, um, what's the advantage working in clown that you, we might have in exploring identity, let's put it positively. What, how does clown clowning engage with identity for you in a way that's that's been positive? And, and like, wow, if I didn't have clown tools, I wouldn't really have got to this. Or something that intersections of clown and identity. Anyone? Question. Um, I'll start. I'll I definitely clown have provided me access to. Um, a way of expressing myself that I hadn't. <laughs> Thank you, Arantha. <laughs> that I, I, appreciate, I appreciate you, Miss Arantha. Uh, that I haven't um, that I've been able to explore in any other type of, um, like whether storytelling or um, um, improv, or even I also did. I also did sketch and character work, and. And like just the physicality of it and being able to move my body. And then also being able, like I have one clown um, who doesn't who doesn't talk, who only who, who, wear, who wears a traditional nose and doesn't speak. And so it's all very physical. Um, and so it's been allowed allowed me to express myself in a way that other forms hasn't haven't been able that I haven't been able to express myself. Um, do do so you know what is it about clowning that has that? You. what is it about clowning that allows you that especially? um it's the it's the emotional well it being well one it's the it's being able to really tap into the emotions and to all of the emotions and to find pleasure in in the happy and the joy and the sadness and then also it's been um i love the uh i tend to break things when i am when i do my stuff i tend to either break things or create these giant messes and so, you know, I, I personally, when people see me, they see me as, you know, I'm just like this bright, shiny, a uh, very well put together uh, individual. But when my clown comes out, like all chaos can ensue. And that has, uh, and I have, and for me, clowning also is a little bit spiritual because I, I personally have a little bit of a, not a little bit, I have a lot of a trickster energy to myself. And so allowing that to come forth um so the controlled chaos the trickster energy the emotional work or the emotional pleasure and all of the emotions and and it has um I, I remember i was actually was talking about this i don't know if you remember this but way back when um i was taking an idiot workshop or i was doing it was when we were at the bottom of ucb way back when and um, we were working with sadness and I just kept crying. Like I just, I was like crying, 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 crying. And I was wearing the nose and there would have been no other place would I've been able to have that emotional release 
and and still and have it be in a place that was safe and secure um, and then be able to use it as a performer um, was was pretty remarkable. Um, so yeah, those are some of the things that clowning has brought to me. And clowning also, it also has brought to me um, a realization, particularly when I go and visit my family, is like, we're all pretty fucking fun funny. And okay. to see that funniness and to be able to see that funniness and not like, it's part of like the McGee's, the McGee's and the Connerly's were pretty funny, but to really see it from a clown perspective is like, oh fuck, we're really funny. Like this is part of my, my tradi my my own personal heritage ancestry like oh like we are like cracking jokes being goofy doing this doing that um so it almost feels part of my like um ancestry like i'm like when i get up on stage my ancestors are applauding me because i'm doing something that i'm supposed to be doing right mm -hmm. so, so, that was so a that, lot so that huh? clapping context is family is community is ancestry yeah, yeah. yeah it's not just something you have to go and learn in a workshop of course you learn many things in the workshop but it's not like you actually have it already you know yeah just fine-tuning it mm -hmm. awesome mm -hmm. anyone else on um on, on this question of what what does clowning allow and how does it allow us to explore identity in a way well i think uh, I am a little bit wary of, I will need to to define what identity means, because what will be the definition of identity? Because for me, I I am a clown because I couldn't be anything else kind of thing. Because I wanted to be a, <clears throat> a tragic actor and uh, no one really took me serious. So now you say, oh, no, I'm sure you wanted to be a clown ever. No, I will I, I I just I wanted to be good, but my first choice has who was always been to be taken serious, and the only way that I've been able to be taken serious is by doing clowning. Uh, now, is my identity to be a serious person? I don't know, but being living in the world that we have lived, where things are bad or good, I have always been. I always felt I was more on the bad side, and suddenly clowning encapsulated those things so when when i talk and then when when it resonates for me when you talk about identity being uh, someone from the basque country where the whole thing your identity your your basqueness your uh, nationality i have always run away from that because there were some qualities of that kind of identity who i found racist and that uh, discriminatory, and uh, I never felt I was better than anybody else. But, and also, uh, thanks to <clears throat> and <clears throat> starting to increase this awareness of our own identities, I discovered some identities that I, I never had, I never thought I had. And, and to use them in the world of theater, clowning, whatever we do, have been really fun to play with and to question them and manipulate them and subvert them um, in, a, in, a, in a dialogue with the audience for fun, for fun, and maybe also to, to create a better world. So, yeah. Amrita, do you want to say anything on the the subject of clowns being able to donkey in a particular biography of a public school teacher that's what she wants to say <laughs> all i want to say um i'll say you know john your i think your question like what you asked there were a couple things you asked in there and you said is clowning just racism like oh yeah that, that question like, too <laughs> yeah like you know i think that there is look like we're like really in it we're doing we're like teachers we're directing stuff we're in it i think it's valuable for us to ask like huge questions like that you know and it doesn't have to be a yes no it's just like why don't we it's it's okay for us to explore that you know um and i think uh the 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 to not get trapped in that there has to be <clears throat> a yes no you know in that question 
sure. But it does help us. I don't know. I, I just want to say there's a value in asking these like big, scary questions because um, they help us to kind of like look at it, look at ourselves. Um, so uh, to answer that, it's absolutely no, I'm kidding. Um, that was a bad joke. It didn't land probably because you can't see my face. Yeah, um, that, I was missing the face. Yeah. Um, comedy is complicated, but I want to say that I, I just uh, I, I really think that it's valuable to ask that question and then um, and also to say that we don't have to the question itself can can call us into looking at different things. It doesn't have to be that there is a yes, no to it. And then because it is, we get rid of it or it isn't. So it doesn't have to do any work, you know, like just to be wary of like the traps of answering it as a yes, no, too. Um but the thing that you're the the greater question is how does clowning help to engage an identity? Um, I'll come on for this. I I do think that like part of clown, uh, you know, John, you and I have talked about like how the emphasis on vulnerability it actually in a pedagogical way benefits certain folks from an identity and it hurts other people in the pedagogical journey. And yet vulnerability is like a part of it. So, you know, that's like an area where I, how do I, I like how I tour said, not the vulnerability of the power dynamic that can exist, but the vulnerability of sharing your pleasure, you know, because sadness, anger tends to be universal. We can all see, um, you know, say so my dear friend died and we can all relate it, that sadness can be a universal. But when we reveal our, what we like, like I like, chocolate ice cream someone else likes mint chocolate chip we reveal who we are so in being in our pleasure it is vulnerable um and our pleasure is unique you know in all the stripes it's unique um of uh, the expression of pleasure so in that way clowning helps to engage in identity in that way of like we um, learn who we are. So I really like what I also said about like, I realized I had identities I didn't know. And um, I, I agree with us as well as so much of what Daisha has said. Um, and so I would, I would say it's similar to those things. Oh, thank you. But also one thing that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think, I think for sure, clowning and comedy has been racist for most of the time. Because the world is very racist. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and, and we are part of the world. And um, I, where I live, I am surrounded by racism. Uh, and, and many of the, lots of that racism is people are unaware of it. And, um, but I, I feel it because I am, because I'm involved in these things that we're doing. And, uh, it's, it's really brilliant to go to rooms to, to do theater where suddenly, uh, racism is, is out of the room and every single person from many different, uh, races, nationalities, backgrounds can play together as equals. Um, that, that's, I, I think that's why we are doing this work uh, and it's, it's challenging because mm, people make many mistakes and, and I think it's, it's important that all of us work actively to create rooms where people can feel, can find their freedom as performers and hopefully freedom as their human beings. But we only understand about performing, I mean. And I, yeah. I, I, I also hear the question of like getting even more specific is clowning as an art form inherently racist and well, or like the world of creating comedy <laughs> clown, et cetera, which I, I think there's the cultural dynamic of the ecosystem. But, and but of course it is, it, but, but of course it is. And it was, and, uh, because it's made by people who were racist and, and, you know, yeah. and, and since the Greeks creating, at least for the Occidental um, culture and education, if we based our culture in those people, they were, they had slaves. I'm, and they talk about freedom. 
sorry no no i i just i we need to wrap up in a, in a minute or so and um i just want to finish i'm going to ask Daisha, you know, what what you're doing in november yes. um so <laughs> but i just just on the back of that i've, I've been reading this book finally which is a history of um and finally this is the second book uh Sheran Noiriel wrote about him um and one of the, and and Sheran Noiriel they they created a theater piece of, um about the life of Shabla and um they took it around different places and at one one point uh, somebody in the audience a young man young black man said um you know I I don't understand how is it that this black guy could have been portraying these racist stereotypes of himself and not said it, not resisted. It, it doesn't make any sense. You know, it doesn't make any sense at all. Of course he would have resisted. And and the author goes on and says, oh, well, then we kind of basically re rewrote the whole show thinking, yeah, we've just been reproducing this idea that somewhere in the past, because it was so racist back then in 1890, you know, um, then the only thing that could have happened with clowning with a black man and a white man working together is that it was a, it was a real, reinforcement of racism but we're, we're forgetting that people you know artists would be playing with these stereotypes and be playing with you know within what they were able to do and would be resisting also um so yeah um that that's that's just because yeah and, and here we are doing it again we're stuck with uh what we've got in terms of the society we have but you know what what are we doing to play within that um so Daisha, what what's why why would we no why would we go and see show? What what's it what is that show, Donkey? Oh, so Donkey, a culture biography of a public school teacher on November eighth at the Elysian Theater here in Los Angeles. It's a show about uh, what everybody it's everybody go. Like to I know everybody, everybody go, please. It's about um, yeah. it's take a, a plane. About... <laughs> take a plane and fly to LA. <laughs> <laughs> it's a show about uh, what it's really like to be a teacher and it's um if you've watched Abbott Elementary and The Bear it's like a combination of those two um oh, so you cool. meet Dr. McGee and all the various characters that she has to deal with within a day and um <laughs> it is it is a little crazy it's a little crazy it's a little it's definitely rated uh, mature for adults only and um, it's pretty fun to do and very exciting to do. And I'm really proud of it. So, yeah. Nice. Awesome. Thank you so much, Desha, for that little plug yeah. again. Yeah, <laughs> you won't miss it. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody. Um, Amitha, I saw Desha once again for spending some time here and talking about this this stuff, which is so exciting. And thank you so much for your time and efforts. Yes. And, Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. thank you.